Hello students, today we are going to study estimates and types of estimates. Estimate is a rough calculation on quantities of various works and their expenditure done by the experts of the relevant field before the execution of a project. Accuracy of an estimate depends on the experience, ability and judgment power of the estimator. It is the process of calculation of material, total expenditure over material and their respective valuation. It means that estimate is generally done for the calculation of quantity of material, total expenditure over material and their respective valuation. Estimation is done to determine the probable cost of construction. A good estimate should have the minimum variation with the actual cost. Now we have various types of estimates that is preliminary estimate, print area estimate, cube rate estimate, approximate quantity estimate, detailed estimate, revised estimate, supplementary estimate, annual repair or maintenance estimate and the last one is extension estimate. Now we will see one by one each and every type of estimate in detail starting with the preliminary estimate. Preliminary estimate is required for initial studies of various aspects of a project to decide the financial position and policy for administrative sanction by the competent authority. Now preliminary estimate is generally prepared for taking the administrative sanction by the competent authority. In case of commercial project, irrigation project, power generation plant, the probable investment and benefits are roughly calculated in preliminary estimate to decide the necessity of the project. Now in preliminary estimate, first the budget consultation is done, next is the preliminary estimate is prepared, after preliminary estimate, final contract is prepared, after all these three steps, construction will begin. Now the next is the plinth area estimate. It is prepared on the basis of plinth area of the building. The rate is detected from the cost of similar building having similar specification, height and construction in the locality. It means that you have to detect the plinth area rate from the cost of similar building in the same locality. Now plinth area estimate is calculated by finding the plinth area of the building and multiplying by the plinth area rate. The plinth area should be calculated for the covered area by taking external dimensions of the building at the floor level. It means that for the calculation of plinth area, we have to take the external dimensions at the floor level only. Courtyard and other open area should not be included in the plinth area. It means that we have to exclude the courtyard and the other open areas from the plinth area. Now the next is the cube rate estimate. It is prepared on the basis of cubical content of the building. Now cube rate is found out from the cost of similar building having similar specification and construction in the same locality. It means that we have to find the cube rate from the cost of similar building in the same locality. Now, how can we find the cubical content of building? We need to multiply the plinth area by the height of the structure for finding the cubical content of the building. Now, height of structure depends on the types of roof. When the roof is flat, then distance between the top of floor level to the top of roof is taken as the height of the structure. But when the roof is sloping like this, then Height is different at different horizontal distances. So we have to take the average height that is H average. That's why I had written here that average height is considered in case of sloping roof. Now one note is here that the foundation plinth and the parapet above roof are not included in cubical content of building. It means that in the calculation of cubical content of the building, we have exclude the foundation, plinth and the parapet above roof. Now the next is the approximate quantity estimate. 
in this estimate total length of walls that is approximate length is found in running meter and this total length is multiplied by the rate per running meter of wall which is found out from a similar bending in the same locality. Now we have to multiply the unit rate with the per running meter of wall to find out the approximate quantity estimate. Now the next one is the detailed estimate. Detailed estimate is an accurate estimate and consists of working out the quantities of each item of work and its cost. Now it is the most accurate estimate because in this estimate we will calculate the quantity of each item of work as well as the cost of each item of work very accurately. The dimensions, length, breadth and height of each item are taken out correctly from the drawing and quantities of each item are calculated and extracting and billing are done. Now after the calculation of quantity of each item we have to prepare the abstract sheet as well as billing is also done. There are two methods to determine the quantity of each item. The first one is long wall and short wall method and the next one is center line method. The first method is the long wall and short wall method or it is also known as individual wall method. Now in this method the length of wall is calculated and the entire plan is divided into number of long wall and short wall. It means that if we have the plan like this, like this, this is the thickness of the brick wall. So we will divide this whole plan into number of long wall that is two number of long wall as well as two number of short wall. Generally the length of long wall is considered from out face to out face that is from this face to this face and the length of short wall from inner face to inner face that is from this face to this face. Now in center line method Total length of center line of walls from whole of the plan has to be found out to compute the total quantity of work and is multiplied with unit rate to get the total cost. Now in center line method we need to find the length of each wall as per the center line like this that is known as center line method. Now in this method care is to be taken while calculating the quantity of item at the corner because this area is not included during the calculation of the quantity but we had taken this area two times similarly we had taken this area two times so it will compensate the remaining area like this here also we had computed this area two times so it will compensate this and here we had calculated this as two times so it will compensate this so in center line method the total length of center line of walls from whole of the plan has to be found out. Now one note is there that the center line method is quick and accurate but needs more attention on the computation of quantities at the junction of two walls. And long wall and short wall method is relatively longer method but do not require high attention. It means that the center line method is quick and accurate but needs more attention at the corners or at the junction of two walls. But long wall and short wall method is relatively longer method but do not require high attention. The detailed estimate is based on two legal forms as following. The first one is measurement sheet in which quantity of work is filled and the next one is abstract sheet used to find the cost of the work. Now in measurement sheet the column is written as serial number, name of particulars, unit, length, width height, quantity and remark and in abstract sheet serial number is written, name of particular is written, unit is written, quantity is written from this, rate is taken from the SOR that is schedule of rates. Now multiplying the quantity with the unit rate we will calculate the total cost and if we need to fill any remark then it will be filled in this column. Now the next is the revised estimate. Revised estimate is a detailed estimate and is required to be prepared under any of the following circumstances. Now when we prepare the revised estimate, when the original sanctioned estimate is exceeded or likely to exceed by more than 5%. It means that when the original sanctioned estimate is likely to exceed by more than 5% then we have to prepare revised estimate or the second circumstances is when the expenditure on a work 
exceeds or likely to exceed by 10% of the original sanction amount. It means that we have to prepare the revised estimate when the expenditure on a particular work exceeds or likely to exceed by 10% of the original sanction amount. Now, we have to give a comparative statement which includes the reason of variation. Now, the next estimate is the supplementary estimate. Supplementary estimate is a detailed estimate and is required when a additional work comes into account during the execution of sanctioned project. It means that during the execution of sanctioned project, if any additional works comes, then we have to prepare a supplementary estimate. Now, the next estimate is the annual repair or maintenance estimate. Now, annual repair or annual maintenance estimate is a detailed estimate and is prepared for repairing and maintenance purpose only. It includes whitewashing, minor repairs, etc. This estimates about 1.5% of total capital cost of structure. Now, the next one is the extension estimate. After construction, when some more construction is to be done, the estimate prepared is known as extension estimate. It means that when the old construction is likely to be finished and if some more construction is to be, is need to be done, then we have to prepare the extension estimate. Now, one note is there that it does not include provision of doors and windows. Now, all the estimates is finished. Now, we will move to the contingencies. The provision of contingencies is made for incidental expenditures incurred during the execution of a project. In an estimate, a separate amount equals to 3 to 5 percent of total cost is provided for contingencies. It means that if certain incidental expenditures comes into account, it means that if demonetization occur or if anything occurs due to which the cost of particular item increases. So, we have to take certain care of increase in the cost of certain item by taking a particular percentage before the starting of the project that is 3 to 5 percent of the total cost is provided for contingencies. Work charge establishment is the provision of basic facilities for the staff which will be involved in the execution of a project. It includes temporary appointments of engineers, administrative staff, labor etc. and expenditure on temporary housings, medical facilities, local market developments, schools, temples etc. A provision of 1.5 to 2 percent is made in a detailed estimate for the work charge establishment. That is all about the estimate and types of estimate. Thank you very much students.